In this video, we're learning about blood vessels. So we'll cover the five main types of blood vessel found in mammals. And then we'll look at the structure and adaptations of each type as well. Overall, there are five main types of blood vessel in mammalian circulatory systems. Arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins. Together, they form a single continuous loop that takes blood from the heart, distributes it all around the body, and then brings it back to the heart again to start over. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Arterioles then connect the arteries to capillaries. Capillaries exchange substances between the blood and body tissues. Venules connect capillaries to veins. And veins then carry blood back to the heart. So now, let's take a look at the structure and adaptations of each type of blood vessel in a bit more detail. The first thing to mention is that all these vessels are tubular structures made up of a wall with an inner layer of endothelial cells that forms a lining called the endothelium. And in the middle of these vessels, there's a space called a lumen, which is where the blood flows through. Let's begin with arteries which are structured to handle really high pressure from the heart, so they have a relatively small lumen because, comparatively, their walls are very thick and contain layers that make them both strong and flexible. One of these substances is called collagen, which provides strength, helps maintain the shape of the artery, and also prevents it from bursting even when a really large volume of blood is flowing through it at a high pressure. The walls also have a thick, elastic and smooth muscle layer. Both parts of this layer are really important. The elastic fibers let the arteries stretch as blood pulses through it, and then recoil, which helps to maintain a constant pressure in the artery. And the smooth muscle is really important because it can contract or constrict the lumen of the artery, which we call vasoconstriction. If we grab a cross section through a vasoconstricted artery, we can see we've got a really narrow lumen, and because of this, the rate of blood flow decreases. The smooth muscle can then relax to dilate the lumen again. The term for this is vasodilation, and it just means widening the lumen. And if we take a cross section through a vasodilated artery, we can see we've got a much wider lumen, so the rate of blood flow increases. Now, we can distinguish between different types of arteries too, depending on what their wall is made up of. For example, elastic arteries have more elastic fibers which allows them to stretch and accommodate the surge of blood that comes with each heartbeat, whilst muscular arteries have more smooth muscle, and this means they can regulate blood flow as it travels throughout the body. Moving on to arterioles, these are fairly similar to arteries, except that they've got a larger lumen relative to their wall because the wall is thinner. They also contain less elastin and collagen than arteries do, but they still have lots of smooth muscle. Because of all this muscle, arterioles are also able to control blood flow through vasoconstriction and vasodilation, which means they can regulate how much blood moves on into the capillaries. Next, we've got capillaries, and these are the smallest blood vessels, and they form extensive networks between the arterioles and the venules. Importantly, Capillaries provide an area where substances like gases and nutrients are exchanged between the blood and the body tissues. So if we take a look inside a capillary, we can see they're filled with blood, and the substances our cells need, like oxygen, will diffuse out of the blood and into the body cells, whilst all their waste products, like carbon dioxide, will diffuse out of the body cells and into the blood inside the capillaries. By the time the blood reaches the capillaries, the blood pressure is at the lowest that it'll be throughout the whole circulation. And because of this, the capillaries don't need to withstand much pressure and so are able to have a very thin wall. In fact, the wall of capillaries is made from just one layer of endothelial cells and the walls don't contain any smooth muscle, elastin or collagen. Having such thin walls is actually really useful for capillaries because it decreases the distance that substances have to diffuse across and this makes the exchange process really fast and efficient. They also have a very narrow lumen, which brings red blood cells close to the tissues that need the oxygen that these cells carry. 
Capillaries are also highly branched, and this maximizes their surface area so that substances can diffuse across more quickly. Now, even though the blood would move from the capillaries into venules, let's quickly jump ahead and cover veins first, because this will help us to understand the venules better. By the time the blood is traveling through the veins, it's been a while since it's been pumped out of the heart, and so the blood pressure is quite low. Veins, therefore, have a fairly large lumen and have thinner inner walls than arteries do, with a very thin elastic and smooth muscle layer, because they don't need to withstand high blood pressures. They do still contain collagen though, which helps to maintain their shape and prevents them from collapsing in on themselves. One of the most important features of veins is that they have valves which prevent blood from flowing backwards. To understand this a bit better, think about the blood that's moving from your feet back up to your heart. It doesn't have a high pressure to push it upwards and it's moving against the force of gravity. So the blood could flow back down again and start pulling up in your feet. To prevent this from happening though, the valves in veins are shaped so that blood flowing towards the heart pushes the valve open. But if the blood is flowing away from the heart, it forces the valve closed, stopping any blood from flowing that way. Because of their thin walls, some veins can be compressed by the skeletal muscles that surround them, like in our legs. And these type of veins have pocket valves that only allow blood to flow in one direction. When these skeletal muscles contract, they squeeze the veins and increase the local blood pressure, which pushes blood towards the heart. After the blood has moved through them, the pocket valves then shut to prevent backflow. So now let's quickly finish up with venules. These are really similar to veins, except they're just a bit smaller. They have very thin walls, very little smooth muscle in these walls, and they also have valves to help direct blood flow into the veins so that it can then be carried back to the heart afterwards. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.